This poem is entitled Death, and uh, it comes with a little introductory message. They say it's easy. Getting there is the bitch. Alzheimer's. You might feel odd, uncertain of the date or season, puzzled how those bits of memory keep turning up half found, half formed on the tip of your tongue. Then one day it's not alarming that your neighbor has become your son, your sister Jean, a principal you knew in school, and Isabel is back from her shallow backyard grave to screech and flap all night in her attic cage. Your wife and children watch you go, thought by thought, day by day, until there's nothing left but neural sputtering, and you, alone in a crowded rec room, oblivious to the smell of bleach and urine, with a vacant stare, more saliva than your mouth can hold, and no idea who you are. Stroke. Oxygen, of course, the priceless cargo and a pulse of blood. When deprived, cerebral cells die quickly, but you may not. Maybe just an arm, loosely hinged, swinging from your shoulder with a white misshapen hand that bounces off your thigh at every stride. Or possibly a useless leg, the infamous zombie foot dragging sideways at the mall. Seventy years since you've been to school, but now you're listening carefully, mouthing silence, straining, as the rehab coach's lips and tongue carefully shape the L's and P's. A highway fatality. Imagine it's a Friday night. You're gliding, almost floating in the comfortable warmth of an FM jazz tune, seven scotches, and a whispering stream of passing lights. You drift away in the warble of a solo flute, miss a curb, and send your Honda headlong off the highway shoulder, bouncing suddenly through walls of lit up scrub and frantic bugs. For an instant, just a flash in that horrific light, you recognize the trunk of a massive oak. You know you've gone before the impact, or maybe not. Maybe in that final moment, light enfolds you in a crumpling dream squeezing in the stars and slivers, screeching open finally in the jaws of life. A siren journey to a sterile room where you are lying staring up at a team of weary doctors, then moments later staring down from just above them. A holiday fall, a thoughtless tilt, a 10th floor balcony above the L, one too many Christmas cheers followed by a joke, a laugh and backward lean, beyond the point where gravity invalidates the laws of balance. And all at once you're tumbling, sailing wingless through the final moments of your 29 year life, as the blackened tracks, half packed with snow, leap up to meet you. Disease. My mother lived it just the way Lou Gehrig did. 37 months with the shape of death feeding in her body. A spider she could not regurgitate or shit or piss away or somehow grab and strangle as it hooked in tight and drained her organs, shrinking her to sticks and knots in a leathery hide. And through it all she kept her mind, smiling often as the spider fed and her body died around her. Suicide. Because at first you'd done it right, the voice is livid. Fine, it whispers, Valium. A final sleep acceptable in lieu of razor blades, a hose and tailpipe, or your husband's 32. But now remorse? Suddenly this need to live? Well, this, my terminal friend, is the Rubicon you've set in motion. Beginning with your fingertips and toes, you will crackle inward joint by joint to sand. Your mouth will fill with roots, and you will soon be wheezing insect wings and ash. Your shrieks will circle back in a hurricane of barbs and slivers. Don't think about the way across, my friend. Don't dream of the other side. Just sleep. Old age. 
Or you may go the longest way, bent and shuffling in soiled sweatpants, inching through the dollar store behind your walker, coming finally to a time when something simply gives. Perhaps your heart, too tired at a billion beats to pump once more. Your liver, poisoning you finally after 80 years of beer and scotch without a rest. Or the lungs you've burnt and scarred, aching, bubbling up with phlegm and tar. Or worse, the iridescent fingers crawling on the ceiling of your skull, inching into fissures, clutching off your ability to stop the tremors, grasp a spoon, or put your right before your left, until you find yourself lying on a bed, strung to the walls with tubes and bags, Nurses wandering in and out among the flowers as you shrink and whiten, drying out like desert linens, staring at the ceiling, pleading in your mind for sleep.